were given to the elves, immortal, wisest, and fairest of all beings. And nine, nine rings were gifted to the race of men, who above all else desire power. This, I think, is going to be a little controversial. There are people, and maybe I'm one of them, that think power and immortality aren't quite as the uh, A equals B type of analogy, type of comp comparison that, that's there. So the question is, do they want power or do they want immortality? So I'm going to read a few quotes, two from the Akalabeth and one from the Two Towers, to kind of uh, set the stage for this. Um, but here we go, from the Akalabeth. But the design of Manwe was that the Numenorians should not be tempted to seek for the Blessed Realm, nor desire to overpass the limits of their bliss, becoming enamored of the immortality of the Valar and the Eldar and the lands where all things endure. And then also from the Akalabeth. Now this yearning grew ever greater with the years for immortality, and the Numenorians began to hunger for the undying city that they saw from afar and the desire of everlasting life to escape from death and the ending of delight grew strong upon them, and ever as their power and glory grew greater, their unquiet increased, for though the Valar had rewarded the Dunedain with long life, they could not take from them the weariness of the world that comes at last, and they died. Even their kings of the seed of Aarndil, and the span of their lives was brief in the eyes of the Eldar. Okay, those two are from the Silmarillion, from the Akalabeth, uh, which is all about the, the Second Age and, and the Numenorians in Numenor. Uh, and then this last one is from the, the Two Towers, from the chapter Window on the West, which oh, is a throwback to the former name of this podcast. <laughs> Good times. Uh, and this is Faramir speaking to Frodo. Uh, and he says this, Death was ever present because the Numenorians still, as they had in their old kingdom and so lost it, hungered after endless life unchanging. Kings made tombs more splendid than the houses of the living and counted old names in the rolls of their descent dear, dearer than the names of their sons. Childless lords sat in aged halls, musing on heraldry. In secret chambers, withered men compounded strong elixirs, or in high cold towers, asked questions of the stars. So we can see immortality was a thing that Tolkien kind of focused on for what men craved. And in the film, the very first thing, the very first thing that Galadriel in the prologue says about men, I mean, this is in what, this is like the fourth sentence of the entire pro prologue, men want power and it just doesn't mention anything about immortality. Now, is power equal to immortality? Is do we do we say it's the same? I know that Michael has an opinion about this, so Michael, I'm gonna go straight to you. If you do indeed want to chime in, uh, yes. So I, Michael has an opinion. So I completely I love your quotes. They mm -hmm. they do in fact make a strong point. Uh, the point that I think they make though is one that is not perhaps. Um, maybe lost on some some folks that watch the movie because there's no great distinction between men made in the movie between men and Dunedain or men and Numenorians. Mm -hmm. But in truth, Tolkien, um, all, all three quotes that you gave there were about the Numenorians. They were not about all men. They were about the Numenorians. And the Numenorians' Achilles heel was indeed and did appear to be the, the desire for immortality. And so um, in the movie... What they show in that shot that was up there for a while while you were reading the quotes were the nine men who would become the ringwraiths. And the and and Galadriel is speaking to Gandalf, Gandalf, sorry, Sauron giving those men the rings. And so I'm going to read a passage from that very gift, that that very giving. Also, and this is from the chapter called Of the Rings of Power, not to be confused with a terrible TV series from last year. Um, this is in the Silmarillion, and it's speaking about the crafting of the nine rings, or all of the rings of power. And it says, But Sauron gathered into his hands all the remaining rings of power, and he dealt them out to the other peoples of Middle-earth. This is the other peoples other than the elves. Hoping thus to bring under his sway all those that desired secret power beyond the measure of their kind. So, the act of giving the rings, those nine rings, which is the, what is being pictured, because Galadriel is speaking about the forging of the rings of power. I mean, that's and it's in the name. They're the rings of power, not not the rings of immortality, although they do bring a kind of immortality as well, which is hence your distinction, or the, at least the question you're raising, Jonathan, about does is there an equal sign between the two? Yeah. I don't think there is, 
But I do think the emphasis is, is on power and because the very first thing we're told about them and the giving of those rings is that Sauron's looking for people that desire power above all things. Um, men proved easier to ensnare. Those who used the nine rings became mighty in their day, kings, sorcerers, and warriors of old. They obtained glory and great wealth, yet it turned to their undoing. They had, as it seemed, unending life, yet life became unendurable to them. They could walk, if they would, unseen by all eyes in the world beneath the sun, and they could see things in worlds invisible to mortal men, but too often they beheld only the phantoms and delusions of Sauron. Okay, and then it talks about how they fall under his thraldom eventually and all become ring race. So what do the men gain from this? Why, why do they accept the rings and what do they gain? They gain first and foremost power of all sorts of kinds. Um, glory, the power that comes with authority, kinship, the power that comes from the use of magic, sorcerers, the power of strength of arms, warriors. They gain the power of, of um, uh, power over men by their persuasion, their fame, and 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 ultimately, so that we have all these species of things that they gain, and and we're told explicitly that Sauron's given to them for power. So what I just think here is that I think there's just a difference in emphasis. I think the 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 movie is trying to emphasize the the fact that men do indeed and especially these men that you're looking at on the, in the film as galadriel speaking they desire power above all things and and um and it, I, I think the text makes it clear so this is the first time number 17 is the first change that i differ slightly with this as a change i don't actually think this is a change i just think this is a different emphasis i think the desire mm -hmm. for immortality is indeed there but i would also remind you jonathan that only three of those nine men are numenorians as um uh, Tolkien says explicitly. So there's something common to all of those men, six non-Numenorians and three Numenorians, which is that they all desire power beyond measure. And so and so that's why I think this is actually, for the first time, change number 17 I hold is actually not a change. Um, mm. It's rare that I'm going to hold that position, but in this case, I do hold that it's not a change. It's just an em a difference in emphasis. Hmm. John, do you have an opinion on this? Well, Michael, I mean, you said it very well. Um, I mean, I think uh, I think you're I think you made a pretty solid case. I have trouble disagreeing with you. Um, I will say, I, I think your point about like the uh, what the movie is addressing is specifically the even though they don't say it right there that by imagery it's like they're addressing the ring rates and and then you you quoted that passage which is probably the best passage to speak uh, to to that group of of men. Um, I will say that. Uh, I, I don't know that the, I don't know that's a change either, but I would have liked to have some kind of mention of the desire for immortality because that that men in general have in Tolkien's Legendarium because that is such an important driver. Um, it is, um, you know, in the history of Numenor, that's really where they make the break, where they start to make the break with the Blessed Realm, with their with their friendship with. Um, you know, with the elves, their um, their allegiance, if you will, to the uh, to the Valar, and they start they start to get envious of the because they have they have power, they have glory, they have all these things, and they they're like, well, why can't we live forever like the Eldar? Mm -hmm. So there's, I mean, from the very beginning, that's a that's a very central issue, but I don't know that it's necessarily a change as much as I would like that to be like acknowledged because it was so important to Tolkien, um, you know, in a very direct way in the stories. I agree. It's probably not a, not a change per se. Well, okay. I'm, I, I'm going to play a little bit of devil, devil's advocate here is, is a, a change in, is a change in emphasis, which is what you said, Michael, it's a different emphasis, which means it is a change when they're emphasizing something differently. Now, Tolkien, Throughout the Silmarillion, throughout, I mean, even the whole, um, man, this is the, the thing uh, that we uh, talked with Middle Earth Mixer, the, with uh, Andra, the, the, um, the discussion between Fing, Fing Beth, Fing Beth, 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 Andra. Yeah. Yeah. See, I can't remember. I, I, it's the difference between Authorbeth and Akalabeth. So I, I yeah, know. They're, they're very I'm similar. never good with these names. The dialogue. Um, the whole dialogue is about essentially like long life right and and they talk about even she she what's her name andreth she talks about uh, a a legend of like a man who lived forever this is what's forefront in the men's mind any any of the men who meet the door dwar the dwarves the elves generally unless it's like a baron type of character there there is there's always some 
uh, tension because of the long life of the elves. And the elves even look at the men and they see them as so brief and everything like that. And so it's not unsurprising that in the quote that you had, Tolkien writes, you know, they obtain glory and great wealth, yet it returned turn to their undoing. And then the very next thing that, that's most important, or one of the most important is that is they had, as it seemed, unending life, yet life became unbearable, unendurable to them, which is exactly the same thing he said about uh, the Numenorians, for he, they wrote, uh, for though the valor had rewarded the Dunedain with long life, they could not take from them the weariness of the world that comes at last, and they died. Uh, and so same sort of thing, life became unbearable. They couldn't endure the weariness of the world. And and so, I, I mean, it's not it's not a change where they said, you know, men desire gold over everything else, which is obviously wrong. That would be mm-hmm. dwarves. It, you, it's not that. But they did. They do say, you know, men desire power. And I think, yeah, I think it cuts it a little bit too far away from what the core of it is. I think without without the long life, without immortality, their power is far less desirable to them. Eh, that's what I think. All right. So, so I was just gonna. I, I was gonna restart my camera after I had to stop it for a second, but because my image, <laughs> my thumbnail image is so appropriate to this conversation. <laughs> <That's> so great. <laughs> which is my uh, uh, my own. It's I'm, I'm bragging a little bit. It's my daughter's um, rendition of a uh, king before he becomes a Nazgul. Here you go. Nice. Uh, <clears throat> there it is. It's a little bit bigger I'll, there. In I'll, the keep, video. I'll keep it up for the uh, for the <laughs> for the voting parts of this. Uh, it's nice to have the like the ringish orb like glowing around it too. Is yeah. It, uh, while you talk, speak. yeah. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> All right. So let's go through these uh, through the through. If it is indeed our first question, men want power, not immortality. Is it lore friendly, uh, Michael? Since you had so much of an opinion, I'm going to start with you here. Uh, it is absolutely lore friendly. Um, it's yeah. well supported in the right. text that men want power. Um, doesn't mean they don't want immortality. And obviously, if you were talking about just Numenorians, I would say um, that it was mm-hmm. a real a real change, like a complete change, because the the Numenorians definitely wanted immortality. That was their big bugbear. Right. But only three of the nine are are, are Numenorians, and uh, and do it's you not... think do you think their power if, if 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 they just got power and not immortality, they would have taken it. No, I I, I don't. I think the immortality was ha! probably a lure. But I the question is, is, is this an actual change from Tolkien's work? I don't think it is. Yeah. I don't think it. Okay. I don't think it right. qualifies. I think it's. I think it's a. It's a. It's just a difference in emphasis. Yeah. So right. definitely lure friendly. Yes. John, what do you think? Uh, yeah, I'd say it's lore friendly. I mean, um, even though I really would have liked more mention of the uh yeah of the desire for immortality and that uh i probably would have liked it better if it had been the desire above all else power and immortality or something like that yeah but, they could have added yeah. like five syllables and it would have yeah <laughs> yeah i i agree I, it would have helped especially because they're talking about the ring race and the ring race are undying right so yeah or, or, or power that. and long life or something like yeah um, yeah 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 exactly that's it that's only three syllables see it's like we're, we're, they should we're have really, had me write it. That's I would right. have nailed it. Where All were right. you? Well, I can't believe you guys said yes. Working. I can't believe you guys said yes to it's lore friendly because I because you're going to say yes too. Yeah, it's, also, exactly. it's definitely lore friendly. I mean, <laughs> uh, like I think you mentioned earlier, it is. They're called the Rings of Power, so it's <laughs> not. It doesn't mean it excludes immortality. Would I think I'm with John a little bit more? Like even one little phrase about who desire power and long life. That right. would have been great because immediately you're like, oh, long life. Oh, the ring. Oh, it gives a natural long life. Like that would have led us right into that, but they didn't. Yep. Makes sense. They should have made. All right. Next question. Does the change make for better cinema? Um, so is it better because they say power and they did say nothing about immortality? John, I'll go to you first this time. Um, I don't think so. Um, I think uh, I think they could have very easily... Oh tip the hat to uh to long life to immortality uh yeah. in there so i will right. say i don't think the change necessarily makes for better cinema um probably doesn't it i yes i would have liked them to mention immortality there you go yeah, yeah. i agree i don't think it makes for better cinema cinema by by removing that point um and it maybe if you haven't read the silmarillion you would say yeah it does because you're, you're making it less complex 
but I don't know what you would have done in the rest of the movie other than add and long life to desire power and immortality or and long life instead of and immortality. Anyway, Michael, your, your thoughts. Um, I'm going to go with a mild. Yes, it does uh, make mm -hmm. for better cinema. And the reason is because it's spoken about, as I mentioned, um, in the cinematic version, there, there's clearly, with the visual they're showing us, they're talking about the ring race. They're talking about the Nine Kings. And, mm -hmm. and so they're just, they're just avoiding the whole immortality thing in general. But when they focus on the power side, these are the rings of power. And these, this is part of Sauron, Sauron's lure with all of these rings. And so it does, it ties, for people that don't know the text, it ties the story better in with the lust for power. But only in a mild way. I'm not really. It's not. I don't have a strong opinion, but I do think it mildly makes it better yeah. and clearer for for the cinematic version. Um, and behind, yeah, it's, fine. <laughs> it's fine. Like I'm just thinking about like the changes that are massive. They get the same rating importance as this here. The the same weight importance. So this is not a very important change to me. But when we get to Faramir, that's a pretty important change to me. But it's still just one of one, not one well, of Well, you know what we should do actually is when we when whenever we decide to take a break from this or when we end it, we should have the what we consider our top 10 most important changes for better or for worse. Oh, that's because a good idea. Because yeah. it's really because you're right. I mean, what we're doing is we're aggregating literally hundreds of changes in, in this series that we're doing. Yeah. And yeah. so it's it would be nice to pick the more important ones and talk about the overall effect they have. But that's long in the future. So that is easy, long in the future. Easy for me. Okay. To Last question. How much do you like the change? How much do you like the change? All right, I'll start on this one. Uh hmm. How much do I like the change? I don't like it. I don't hate it. I think it's just right in the middle. I'm just sort of always there. Uh, it doesn't bother me, but I, I think they could have made it a little bit better. Uh, Michael. Um, I like the change because I like the focus on the ring wraiths. And so um, I, I, but I don't like it that much. It's not that big. It, so it's mildly again. Um, so 3.7 for me. Hmm, 3.7. It's a veritable, like straight A there. Um, okay. John. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> Three point seven to a five is me. <laughs> what college did you go to? <laughs> it's trying to make a um, point that you love these changes so much. <laughs> totally joking. Okay, John, go ahead. Sorry. I I'd probably go with a. Uh, uh, I mean, I'd probably go with a one. Like I just um, meaning don't like it because, and I know it's we we're saying it's not really a change, and I know I said it's lore friend, you know, it's lore friendly, uh, but it's kind, of, but but. I just, um, man, immortality is so, the question of immortality and what that would look like is so important in Tolkien's Legendarium. And, um, hmm. uh, you know, that I just feel like it's a, uh, it's a missed opportunity to bring that up. And I think it, the thing that bugs me is that whenever, whenever people, uh, whenever folks bring like kind of a, uh, want to, modernize or materialize or make a little more palatable uh the things of tolkien um it, like that's the thing i think bugs me is like they're not bringing like and again not that it's this big dastardly like exclusion but it's just like immortality is hugely important it's like somebody it's like when tolkien takes issue in one of his letters um somebody it make kind of a related question i think somebody makes like says something along the lines of well the the point of like the biggest theme in lord of the rings is um you know has to do it may, it may have been they may have said something like power or something like that and tolkien responds to that and says no it's ultimately about like the worship of god which is mind blowing because you're like what <laughs> like it's about Tol Tolkien hmm. claims it's about the worship of God. You know, it's about the worship of God is like the central key issue because you're like, well, how do you get there? Um, and he, you know, explains it. But um, anyway, I think that missing out on immortality uh, there in the prologue is a um, it's just a dropped ball in terms of the stakes in, in terms of everything that's at stake in the story. So, man, our guest so, is so here. Yeah, you're making you're making uh, Jonathan look like a, a normie here. I love it. <laughs> um, but uh, but but I, I have a quick question for you. Do you so do you dislike it as much as you would 
like some of the more egregious changes because remember the change is just the shift to power instead of immortality which i understand why you're saying it's a missed opportunity but it's not like men desiring power isn't a theme in tolkien um so so it, it's it's not like it's contrary to his to his story it's a, um, it's a large sin of omission <laughs> <laughs> well you think it's sort of like it would have been really easy to fix and mm -hmm. if the, it's not like um uh, changing faramir where they where they decided to change faramir you can't just in post add a phrase to fix faramir it just makes you me think like it, it's just like I mean, I, I have a lot of respect for uh, I do. Have, I have a lot of respect for Peter Jackson and what he accomplished with the movies. Don't get me wrong. Uh, but to me, it's like one of those things where it's like. Do you really do you really get it? Like, do you really mm -hmm. understand mm -hmm. what's going on, like at the deepest level here? And uh, and I don't I, I don't know much about Peter Jackson, like on a uh, personal level, but I don't think he's particularly you know, friendly to questions of like religion and that kind of thing. But I mean, Tolkien is just lays it out in the story um and and i think maybe maybe there's a little bit of that uh, that bias brought to the table um and, and through excluding. his avoidance you mean yeah 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 interesting so i understand it's not like the most like oh i can't believe they changed that you know but it's uh it's just a it's it's a it's a the more i think about it the more i the more i dwell upon it uh, and i've been with you guys <laughs> yeah. for the rest of the issues but the more i dwell upon it i'm like I get the like, sense oh, that yeah. I get the sense yeah. John would have a lot of ones in our uh <laughs> <laughs>